Shout it out, shout it out, God. 
Eu me amo e a
free to recognize his spirit. Free to recognize his spirit and his anointing in our lives, his grace in our lives.
free in every part of us. He died on that cross for us because he loved us. And when we bring our tithes and offerings, we're not paying him back. It's not about that. It's about his love. He wants an intimate relationship with each and every one of us. He wants our heart. It's all about love, his love and ours. It's about trusting him with our finances and with our whole lives. He takes pleasure in us. It's about loving him so much that we are in a giving and receiving, a receiving and giving relationship with him and others. And others. It's about love and the trusting him in every single area of our lives. Entwined, and entwined like a vine, you know, with a vine all get tangled in together and they're so close. He wants to be even closer than that because he has intimacy with us. Entwined in his love and ours, it's a genuine, sincere love for him and then the outpouring of his love for us to others. And then I also got another scripture. He says it was in, um, I think it was uh, Luke 6. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. We will not be judged. Do not condemn, and we will not be condemned. That's part of the blessing. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, forgive, and you will be given. Give and gifts will be given to you. Yeah, given gifts will be given to you. A good measure, packed together, shaken down, and overflowing. And some of that overflowing is what we received this morning in our giving and receiving from our Lord, spiritually. It will be poured out into, into our laps for the measure that we use will be the measure that we receive. <coughs> and then I have a blessing for us. Psalm 125, I believe the Lord wanted to just bless us. He always blessed us, but he wanted to declare this blessing over us. Those who trust in the Lord, this is from Psalm 125. I like Mount Zion. We're like Mount Zion because we trust in the Lord, which cannot be moved and abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forever. For the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land Lord to the righteous, unless the righteous reach out their hands to iniquity. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good. Trust in the Lord with all our hearts, and do not lean on our own understanding, acknowledging him in everything. That means every single thing, everything, all. He gave us so much that we could live in abundance. We give because we live. Giving is the joy of living. Amen. And anyways, now, we were told that we we're in for a big blessing. So we, we thank the Lord. We want to welcome David and his wife, Donna Richardson. Woo! He's going to be our speaker tonight. We're going to speak to him. And I'm sure he's going to be a blessing to you all. Yeah. Collect, collect oh, yes. Thank you. Um, we'll collect the offer. <laughs>
easy to minister the word. And the glory of God is this thing. That's John Greetings from the Lodge Church, Pastor Crystal and Spencer. They're the ones who got me in this. The <laughs> hooch with your pastor, obviously. I thank God for the body of Christ. We knew your pastors many years ago, 20 years ago, at the Concord Church worth life. And you just think about those 20 years that have gone by. And Margaret's kind of hand has a church in Portsmouth. Dan and Sherry's got a church in Osprey. There's a church in Conway. This church, the large church in Gorm, none of them were there when we were all in Conway. None of them. All of it worked in the last 20 years. How wonderful that is. Yes. Hallelujah. How wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This morning I want to minister to you about the wells of salvation. This is a topic that's been on my heart. This is a revelation that the Holy Ghost gave me, and it's alive in me. I ministered yes. this in Gorham two weeks ago, and uh, I, it came to me, uh, I don't know, it's been four or five months ago that the Holy Ghost dropped it inside of me and it's been growing in me and every week it grows a little bigger and so uh, I, I knew it was where we were going to go uh, this morning and I just I want to minister that word to you uh,
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Neil Moody made a statement that 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 day in Pentecost was just an example of what he must do again and again and again throughout history. That that was just an example of what it should be throughout every generation. The fire of the Holy Ghost upon the heads of all the churches throughout all the generations. Amen. 300 years ago, there was a revival in Rochester, New York, that 150,000 people were saved in that revival. 300 years ago. Oh. 150,000 people were saved, and they took a they took a tally two generations later and said that. 80% of those people held their faith in all of those years. 80% of that 150,000. There's been revivals throughout all of the history. If you don't know of the revivals, get books. Read them. Learn what has happened in your past. For your past is going to come forward now. We've come into the time of a kingdom age. We've come into the time when the supernatural work of God is going to, going to do a work in the churches today that has never been seen or done before. I was reading a book by Dutch Sheets. And in the book, he tells about, he uses the word synergy. And synergy, the definition of it is taking one element and connecting it to another one. And that element connects to another one. And we see it in the natural realm with, with medicine. We see cancer treatments where multiple medicines are connected together to become one very powerful medicine. And Dutch shared this word that the Lord gave him about the synergy of the ancients. That throughout the church age, throughout the Christian life, there is a synergy of strength, of power, of authority, of an anointing that has got to come together. That we are not one generation completing our generation, oh well, didn't get it done, and the next one starts. But we are a, a generation in succession. A generation hooked up to the next generation and carrying on with what they did not get completed. We pick up the baton and we keep running the race. Come on. Yes. A relay. That's exactly it. And that's what we are, have been doing. That's what we are. We are a people with synergy in the Spirit of God connected to our past. These revivals that 300, 200, 100 years ago, George Fire, Mazusa Street, doesn't matter. There is a connection in the Spirit of God to fulfill a purpose and a plan that God has for this generation. Amen. Hebrews in the 11th chapter. I'm reading out of the NLT because it's in my phone. I'm going to start. You guys all know this chapter. This is a, this is a popular chapter that we love to read. Verse 4. It was my faith that Abel brought a more acceptable sacrifice offering to God than Cain. And I'm just going to skip down through here. It was my faith that Enoch was taken up into heaven without dying. It was by faith Noah built a large boat and saved his family from flood. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed 
when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him his inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going. And even when he reached the land God promised him, he lived there by faith. For he was like a foreigner living in tents. And so did Isaac and Jacob, who inherited the same promise. God made a promise. I'm going to give you this land. God made a promise. You're going to become like the stars of the sky, the sands on a seashore. But yet they never saw that promise come to back. What happened to God's promise? God making promises he couldn't fulfill? Yeah. Yeah. Abraham started out with one son. One son had two sons. One of those sons had 12 sons. And by the time they ended up in Egypt, they had seven. But by the time they left Egypt, 400 years later, they had three and a half million people. Now you see the multiplication. And the hand of God is on it. It was by faith that even Sarah was able to have a child when she was barren and too old to bear a child. And so a whole nation came from this one man who was as good as dead, a nation with so many people like the stars of the sky and the sand on the seashore, there was no way to count them. All these people died, still believing what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it all from a distance and welcomed it. They agreed that they were foreigners and nomads here on the earth. Obviously, people who say such things are looking forward to a country they call their own. If they had longed for a country they came from, they could have gone back. But they were looking for a better place, a heavenly homeland. That is why God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he has prepared a city for them. It was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac. Abraham reasoned that if Isaac died, God was able to raise him from the dead. It was by faith that Isaac promised the blessings for the future of his sons, Jacob and Esau. It was by faith that Joseph, when he was about to die, he blessed. He, he, I'm sorry. When he was about to die, he said confidently that the people of Israel would leave Egypt. He even commanded them to take his bones with him. It was by faith that Moses' parents hid him for three months. It was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. It was by faith that the people of Israel went right through the Red Sea and on dry ground. It was by faith that Rahab, the prostitute, was not destroyed with the people of the city who refused to obey God. How much more do I need to say? It would take too long to recount the stories of faith of Gideon, Barak, and Samson, and Jephthah, David, Samuel, and all the prophets. By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, received what God had promised them. They shut the mouths of lion, quenched the flames of fire, and escaped death by the edge of the sword. Women received their loved ones back from the dead. Others were tortured, refusing to turn, turn from God in order to be set free. All these people, the last verse, earned a good reputation because of their faith. Yet none of them received all that God had promised them. Did God lie? Here they are 
in the faith chapter of the Bible. Here they are just declaring how great, how wonderful God was, all that they did for God, and they did not fulfill. They did not fulfill, they did not get to see all that God had for them. But the very last verse tells a story that I love to get into. For God had something better in mind for us. So that they would not reach perfection without us. Think about it. Moses, Noah, Abraham, all those people behind us, all those people of, of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, earned a good reputation, yet none of them received all that God had for them. But God had something better in mind for us so that they would not reach perfection without us. I'm glad that us keeps moving ahead in the timeline of times. Amen. When Paul wrote it, he was us. Right. 2,000 years later, we are us. Yeah. And we read it again. But God had something better in mind for us so that they would not reach perfection without us. Amen. A baton had to be passed on. If God has got something better for us, it was connected to them. That they are going to receive a blessing because we finished the race. Yes. Because a baton gets picked up in this generation and fulfills the plan of God in New England. That out of New England, there are wells that have been dug for centuries. That in New England, there are souls that have been saved, <coughs> prayers that have been prayed, tears that have been shed, yeah. Yeah. and have never been fulfilled. And those wells are still there. Those prayers yeah. are still intact. There must be a conclusion one day for us. The synergy of the ages has got to come together. We'll just keep going. Don't she Read, the great cloud of witnesses had finally become more and more, more than mere spectators and cheerleaders to me. They were an earlier leg of a relay race, waiting for somebody to grab the baton and start running. How do we think about that great cloud of witnesses watching over us? Poking fingers, saying, no, 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 what are you doing, what are you doing, you made a mistake. Or a cheering crowd of brothers and sisters saying, you guys can do it. You can complete the race. You can complete the course. Go on. Grow that church. Grow that ministry. Dig those wells. That's who they are. in the right hand of the one sitting on the throne. The one sitting on the throne is God the Father. Some call it a book. There was writing on the inside and the outside of the book, 
and it was sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel who shouted with a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seal on this scroll and open it? And no one in heaven, no one on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll and read it. I began to weep bitterly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll. But one of the 24 elders said to me, Stop weeping and look. The Lion of the tribe of Judah, the heirs of God's throne, has won the victory. He is worthy to open the scroll and the seven seals. Then I saw a lamb that looked as if he had been slaughtered, but it was now standing between the throne of the four, elders, four, the four living creatures and among the four and twenty elders. He had seven horns and seven eyes, which represent the sevenfold spirit of God. He stepped forward and took the scroll from the right hand of the one sitting at the throne. And when he took the scroll, the four living creatures and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a heart, and they held gold bowls filled with incense, which are the prayers of God's people. I love the picture. Jesus standing there with a scroll in his hand, a book in his hand, ready to open it. And here are four and twenty elders, twenty-four elders, supernatural creatures in heaven, that are holding these giant gold bowls full of incense. And that incense is the prayers of God's people. Don't ever think. Don't ever think they were lost. Don't ever think they were, didn't amount to anything. Nobody heard them. I guess God was busy today. Nobody cared. There are 24 elders in heaven holding them, holding gold bowls full of your prayers. And they are read. And they are known. And they are used. And we'll go on. They sang a new song with these words. You are worthy to take the scroll and break the seals to open it. You were slaughtered and your blood has ransomed people for God. Ransomed people. That's a word that means we have been made kin. This, this is the word of the elder brother joining him. A, a kinship. A, a meeting of 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 bloodlines together. He has, we have been ransomed by him. The kin, the, the kin, what's the word? Uh, uh, excuse me? Yeah, thank you. That's exactly it. Thank God. This is your blood has ransomed people for God from every tribe, every language, and people and nation. Every tribe, every people, every language, every nation, we've been ransomed, put together. And you have caused them to become, here you go, a kingdom of priests for our God, and they will reign on the earth. The whole purpose, God taking brothers and sisters from, from every time, from, from every nation, every language, every tongue, every color, putting us together and being our redeemer, kinsman redeemer. Connected, bonded as one person. You have caused them to become a kingdom of priests for our God. Don't think you don't have authority. Don't think you are nothing. If you belong to Jesus, you are a king and you are a priest. 
God's word says. Amen. Amen. That's who you are. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Therefore, the king and the priest, last time I knew the word of God, said you have the authority to make certain decisions. That's right. That's right. And to speak over your town and over your city and declare wow. what things are going to be. Yes. Come on. So we'll go on. With me? Yeah. Takes a few minutes to unpack this, but I'm getting there. We're not there yet, but I'm getting there. You bring it. Now we go to the other end of the Bible. Genesis, the 29th chapter. This is what I want to share. I want to thank you for staying with me. I love it. Great. Genesis 29. Here's a story. Man. I've read this story so many times in my life. Sunday school. All the way through. But one day I read this story. And it came alive inside of me. I saw this story in a whole new light. This is a story of Jacob and Esau splitting. Father blessing Jacob, kind of stole that blessing, headed out. Jacob and Esau, they were separated, twins really, but separated in attitude, separated in what they wanted, their choices of all through life, very different. Isaac and Rebecca finally urged him to leave, don't marry a Canaanite, whatever you do, do not marry one of these women. Leave, go back to where my family is and find a wife. So this is where, where we pick this up. Jacob has left his home, left Esau, heading back towards Haran, there to hopefully find a wife. Jacob hurried on, finally arriving in the land of the east. He saw a well in the distance, three flocks of sheep and goats lay in an open field beside it waiting to be watered. But a heavy stone covered the mouth of the well. It was the custom here to wait for all the flocks to arrive before removing <coughs> the stone and watering the animals. Afterward, the stone would be placed back over the well, the mouth of the well. Jacob went over to the shepherds and said, uh, where are you from, my friends? We're from Haran. <coughs> Do you know the man named Laban, the grandson of Hamor? Yes, we do, they replied. Is he doing well? Yes, he is well, they answered. Look, here comes the daughter Rachel with the flock now. Jacob said, look, it, it's still broad daylight. Too early to round up the animals. Why don't you water the sheep and goats? so that they can go back to pasture. We can't water the animals until all the flocks have arrived, they replied. <coughs> then the shepherds move the stone from the mouth of the well, and we water the sheep and the goats. Jacob was still talking to them when Rachel arrived with the father's flock, and she was a shepherd. And because Rachel was his cousin, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother. And because the sheep and goats belonged to Uncle Laban, Jacob went over to the well, moved the stone from its mouth, and watered his uncle's flock. See, it's good to have a bloodline. It's good to be connected to somebody because out of that bloodline, Jacob had 
the authority to go and open that well. And this is what the Holy Ghost said to me. It's time to open the wells. Stop me. In that, in that moment of revelation, it's like he can unpack a word in those few moments, download it inside of you, that you knew what he meant. It's time to open the wells. Come on. So there have been wells that have been dug all across New England, throughout the nations of the world. There have been wells dug. There have been revivals. There have been preachers. There have been pastors. There have been parishioners. There have been mothers and grandmothers praying over their, their sons, their daughters, their family, their future family. And they rise, and they die, they are buried. But one thing, not forgotten. Those wells, those wells that have been dug across this plain, comes from the church that struggled for five years and just couldn't make ends meet. Two people came on Sunday and had to close the door. That is a well. And that was seed sown into the ground. And that is seed that my father looks over and watches and guards and protects. Do not consider the fact that you didn't do anything. Oh, you just failed. No, you did not just fail. That is a well done. I have a very elderly mother. She's not well, and we've spent a lot of time with each other over the last year. She got telling me about, uh, she's 95. She got telling me about her grandmother, which I didn't know at all. And she says, she was such a prayer. What do you suppose she used to pray about? I says, I don't know, Mom. What do you think? I don't know. But I used to go over to their house and she would be in her bedroom praying. And I could stand at the door and listen to that woman pray. Whoosh. Glory to God. Because a well was being dug. We don't see the end of that. But that well is being produced. Hallelujah. But there's a day coming. And he said, I'm of the wells. Hallelujah. We've come to a time when it doesn't matter who has been behind us. It doesn't matter. We stretch out our, our hand and we take the baton and we say, I'm going to continue running. I'm going to grab this thing and I'm going to go. I'm going to use my authority as a son of the Most High God. I am going, I am a king, I am a priest, and I am going to speak over these wells open in the name of Jesus. I'm going to tell, I'm, I'm going to tell the angels of heaven, go and open wells. I'm going to send the host of heaven forth and say it's time. The Father said it. Go open wells. Right. Undig these wells. Dig them out again. Remove the stones. How many times has the enemy come along and put a big stone over a well? I shut them up. They won't be talking any longer. Too many. Too many. Yeah. Oh, the enemy thought he could quiet them down, then church people. We have come to a time, a supernatural time, a time where we have liberty, a time when the Word of God backs us up, a time when we are called kings and priests. Yes. yes. Authority. A time when we have authority in heaven. <coughs> and the angels hearken 
to our voices. They stand in our prayer meetings waiting for a signal, waiting for a word. Go! They come into our churches and they line our walls listening to the word of God. Hoping for somebody to send them on a mission. Well, today is your day, mighty ones. But today you go and open the wells in New England. You go and open the wells of Laconia, of the Lakes region. You go call them open the wells that have been dug for so long here. Yes. Yeah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Preach. Take your liberty in the Holy Ghost. Take your liberty. This day, you are the ones. It is us that he is looking for to finish this course. Come on, man. We have that place in the name of Jesus. We are the last ones. We are the last generation. We are the ones that's going to tie this thing all up. And we are going to bring glory to him, the God of all the ages. Finish it. Thank you, Lord. It's tough. It's time. If you don't pray, Sorry. stop praying. Yeah. You don't pray, get yourself into the prayer room. I'm tired of these four person prayer rooms. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because they're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. Right. Out of prayer, out of prayer, yeah. out of the authority of the believer. We move the kingdoms of hell. You have the authority. You have what the right to stand and move hell because you pray. Yep, right. Satan's not too bothered by churches being built. Not bothered by. Even by a full house. Great programs. But he shakes in his boots when prayer is on their knees. He shakes in his boots when men and women know their authority from the Word of God and said, I'm not going to take it any longer. And it is time that we fill the prayer rooms with prayers. It is time that the prayers take their places in authority and in life and power. Remember to use your voice. Remember to speak and declare those things that are not as though they were. Amen. I am done with it. A whole new day for this guy. When he dropped that inside of me, he sat on top of the wells. You know what? That's all I've been doing. And every single day I go to prayer, I start uncovering wells. I look for new wells. I look for old places that aren't doing well, and I start digging into those wells. There's lots of them, folks. There's generations. Of wells, there's thousands of wells that the enemy has put the large stone on top of. But you come with the right and the authority to move that stone. Oh, don't move the stone. We gotta wait for all the sheep to come. And then the shepherd will come and move the stone. And Jacob says, oh, it's broad daylight. What do you mean? Why are the sheep getting back out in the pasture? Yeah. Oh, no, I, I would do that. <laughs> we can't do that. We have to let them. Well, there's a lot of sheep that needs a drink of water. And it's time these wells be opened so that the sheep may drink. Yes. 
and the sheep has to drink. Because let me tell you the story of life. Sheep beget sheep. Sheep are strong. Sheep needs to go eat. Sheep have more sheep. How it goes. And here they are, broad daylight, bringing them into the corral. And Jacob shaking his head, I, I don't get this. This don't work. It's time to open the wells. It's time <coughs> to water the sheep. Amen. Amen. Holy Ghost said to me, one morning when I had read this 50 times, Holy Ghost said to you, there's lots of wells, David, that have to be opened. They're everywhere. They're in every town. They're in every city. They're in every state. They're in every nation. There's wells everywhere. He says, you know why there's so many wells that have been closed up? I said, no, why? He says, because this end time revival is so great there needs to be so much water available for them to drink. You think I forgot about those wells and the, and the, and the labor that was put into those wells and the seed sown and the tears shed for those wells? Do you think that I'm not going to bring that full circle and feed a harvest like the world has never seen? have a plan like that. Only you could think that Abraham was going to be blessed because we finished the course the right way. We're connected. We're brothers and sisters across millennia. Because we are his and he is ours. He is of all the nations. Kinsman, redeemed. Light the fire again. I want you to consider your wells. Laconia, Lakes Region, Maryland, Winnipesaw. Think of all that's been here. I live up in Conway. I know the wells there because I've been a part of them for generations. They are here as well. You know them. You've been a part of them. You hear stories of them. Time for harvest, folks. Time for the greatest harvest we ever know. And there must be wells. There must be wells on stock because the sheep need to drink. You can't do it all in this church. You can't do it in seven churches. The harvest will be so great that you will be thinking of, of fields that you could hold people in. There'll be warehouses. Thank God you're in a business like this, in a business section. I love the fact that you built a church in the middle of a business dish. All about the Father's business. Man. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Stand with me, please. Light the fire again. Light the fire again, folks. Light the fire again. Father, thank you for this word. Thank you for this word that's alive within us. I pray that this word will not leave our minds or leave our hearts, leave our spirits. I pray that you will bring us to our knees. 
I pray that we would speak and declare over this area, over these towns and cities, <coughs> over this nation, over this government, over this ungodly world. Like the fire again. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus right now over this assembly, over this people, over the hearers of my words, that you would light a fire in them. That you would uncover the wells of salvation unto them. That, Father, their connections in this world would be uncovered. Their connections in families, their connections in, in relatives, their connections of old would come alive, would, would burst forth, uh, that the water of the Spirit of God would arise within them, and they would have liberty to speak and declare over their households, over their loved ones, over their husbands, and over their wives, and over their children, that there become a liberty in the Spirit of God in this assembly, in Jesus' name. Angels, go forth. In the name of Jesus. Take these words and go forth. Because we commission you to open the wells over the lakes region in Jesus' name. We commission you to take those wells that have not been active. Find them. Dig them out. If the enemy has hid them, uncover them. Expose them. And open these wells that the sheep may drink. We call for the harvest of souls in Jesus' name. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Mm. I pray your blessing over this ministry, over the pastors as they are away. I, mm. I pray you bless their lives. You Amen. strengthen them. You anoint them. For great is the work of God unto, unto them. Mm. I thank you for them. I thank you, Lord, for their commitment to the lost, to the church, to the ministry. Jesus, we pray your blessings over everyone here as they travel home today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Coffee and get a chance to talk and socialize. So, God bless your week and 